All right, so crypto looks like it's stabilizing a little bit, looking like we might be ready for a little bit of a run for the next couple of days. We'll see what happens. Like I said, this is uncertain times at the moment. We have to take it day by day. I did say in my last video that ETH was looking pretty weak, but it looked like it was going to stay in that range for a couple of days. So right off the bat, before I even get started with my top five cryptos that I'm looking at, I just want to quickly say ETH might be the best buy along with, of course, Bitcoin, simply just because of how risk or how low risk they are with compared to other cryptos. You can put a large amount of money in something like ETH and get 150 to 100 percent return just with ETH alone. Think of it just in terms of returns. Don't look at the projects. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just DCing a carefully into ETH. It's looking like it's stabilizing, but I've got a bit of cash ready aside. Should it start going to that 2018 level? It did. Again, check my last video from if you want more details about Ethereum. But at the moment, let's just talk about the five best altcoins at the moment. First of all, before I even get to the altcoins, let's just have a look at the NASDAQ. It bounced perfectly off that 50%. You can see right there signaling that the altcoins was going to be due for a run. The NASDAQ, as everyone knows, is highly correlated to cryptocurrencies. So if we just zoom right out, we can see we are in a very good position at the moment with a really good solid bounce off. What I also like about the NASDAQ is we are looking like finally, 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 we actually have a very, very strong close on the weekly. Now, this still does have some time before it closes, but it's already looking very promising because it's been a long time since we had a close that strong. And you can see we've had one, two, three, four, five, six weeks closing week or, or negative. And what I really like about this last week, if you look at the week ending in the 16th of May, you can see that all that fear got brought back up and a good strong close. And then the next the next bar for the next week, which is the current week we're on, you can see a beautiful test to the 50% and a very, very strong close, indicating that the market might be ready for a little bit of a turnaround. Again, we need multiple bars before we can affirm those things. We need some tops to be broken to confirm these things, but it's looking promising for the time being. Let's get started with the altcoins and what's the best altcoins that I'm looking at for the day. Now, again, I want to be clear that I am looking at mainly Ethereum for myself just because it just fits in with my investment strategy. But these have just looked really good on a chart. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. The first one has to be Rune. Now, when I'm looking at the best altcoins, I'm mainly looking for one thing and that's volume. I need the volume to be there. So have a look at your volume indicator. Look at the average volume and you're looking for a very strong close. Now, a lot of these volume bars, you can see increasing volume from the 28th of May. So you can see 28th increasing volume, 29th increasing, 30th increasing. And you can see the closes just get better and better and better. So the spread's better. That's really what you're looking for. Looking like we're going to close around the 50% mark. So look for the next two, three days for that confirmation. But Rune is looking like it's got the volume. And this was actually a really high performing crypto in about that March period of 2022 when it was, I mean, getting you some pretty good gains. I mean, basically from February 22nd to about 1st of April, you got a 340% increase. So Rune was a signal that, okay, there's clearly volume here. What you're looking for is the volume still there. Do people still care about it or have they just let this thing to run to the, off to the desert to dry, to dry out and die? And that's why volume is really, really good because you want to see how many people are actually interested in this still even a couple months later. And it looks like there's still interest for Rune. Let's have a look at the next one. We've got the next one, which is Phantom. This is probably my favorite out of the bunch. Uh, again, these are tradable coins though. I'm not looking like these are HODL coins. If it's a HODL coin, I'll let you know, but most cryptos are not HODLs because there's so many things that can happen like Phantom. Fell off tremendously. I, I make videos about cryptocurrencies and then some people leave comments saying, oh, this didn't age well, this didn't age well. And it's like once once they start breaking these levels, you, you know, you got to get out, you know, and I, I, I can't be posting videos about like, I'm, oh, you should get out of this, you should get out of this. It, you know, you have to look at the, the chart and say, okay, it just broke through that support, I'm out. Um, unless you just want to hold super long term, you know, five, six years, maybe crypto will be in a completely different realm by then. But what I'm trying to say is, Look at a chart, have your prices, just open up a candle chart, put on a monthly and just see where they're getting knocked down from. So you can see this was a very, very high level of support, this blue air, horizontal area. Broke that, broke down, and now it's testing those levels from about August, which is pretty sad to see Phantom have to go this low. But it's a tradable coin. Again, eventually every coin, every share, everything in the world, eventually it gets to a price where people are happy to buy it at and the smart money thinks this is a good value and they start to buy and accumulate. And if you look at Phantom, you can see accumulation clearly happening here with the volume being really, really big. That's all you need. Very simple analysis. There's your 50%. And what I like about Phantom a lot is the pullback wasn't that bad. A lot of cryptos were pulling back. Phantom went back 35%, not as bad as other cryptos. But you're looking at the volume. Look at the volume, how we had very, very high volume on the green days. And then on the red days, we had relatively low volume. It was increasing, but we've got the liquidations. And now we're starting to see a bit of volume increasing. So Keep an eye on it for Phantom. This one is a very, very good one that I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Again, I'm personally only going into ETH, but just going to the next area, you're looking at about a 20 to 30 
five percent ish profit taking potentially for what what is that risk it's about a 12% risk, potentially 20% risk at most, unless you really want to hodl this thing and see how you go. But I wouldn't be hodling this thing. It's just a good crypto that I've been looking at lately. Next one up is Mana Decentraland. This is another one you can see. Notice how much these are breaking down. How much are they breaking down? What's the volume like? Those are really the two key things you're looking at to see which altcoins have actually held off, right? We're in a bear market. There's going to be cyclical components to it. Which cryptocurrencies are getting dumped and which ones are actually not pulling back as hard? That's what you're really looking for. See, you can see mana pulled back, right? But it didn't pull back a lot. You can see it didn't have to go past that May 12th low. It still managed to hold up high from that massive spread of the bar. We're about a 44% increase. And then the next day, 30% increase. Now I've been talking about mana a lot. And you can see mana above its 50% mark. And you can see going from there to its high at, on the 15th of May is about 36%. Your risk about approximately 11%, maybe 12%. It looks like a pretty good winner. The only thing that's annoying me about this is we had these really, really two big volume days. And since then, we've just dropped off and we hadn't had that massive breakout that we're all waiting for when some, when you see something like this. But it should be coming soon. Hypothetically, it really should. I mean, nothing's guaranteed, of course. But the fact that it hasn't pulled back as hard and we're still waiting for that next breakout tells me that this mana should be nearer in the coming days, hopefully, depending on how the market plays out. But again, stop losses in place. You don't want it breaking those levels. It cannot break May 12th level. It can't even break the low that it put in the 27th of May. It's just some stop losses that you should really check out. The next one up is AVAX. Uh, AVAX, I've sold out of my AVAX a while ago. It was just looking really weak. I don't know what's happened to it. I don't know if it was Luna because they were holding some, some AVAX as part of their plan. Uh, but the problem is that this crypto has gotten hit so damn hard. And it's so sad to see because this was one of my favorite cryptos that I was talking about a lot. You look at that 82% down from where it was. But what I love about AVAX is we're starting to look like we've got a little bit of volume kicking in a little bit. And you can see, if I look back in the daily, we haven't had volume this big in a while. And you can see the big sell-off happening on the 11th to 12th of May, some accumulation or some you know consolidation happening here. And you can see very, 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 very big volume bars on the 26th and 27th of May. And notice how big the volume bars are. And this is what I always say on my channel. Volume is a really, really good indicator to see how the smart money is playing their cards and when the selling is done. You can see on the 26th of May, AVAX went down 14% on very, very high volume. The next day, even bigger volume, but it only went down 3%. Do you see how that happens? So you got even more volume, but a less spread. It means that everyone was buying this up. Okay. And the next day you get the confirmation because you get an up bar where it basically over, overtakes the other one. Look for it to overtake this 26th of May bar. Uh, that will be a sign for strength as well for AVAX. But again, these are short-term trades. Take your profits, move on, because you just don't know when the next dump is going to happen at this moment. It's looking a little bit better at the moment, but there's still so much un uncertainty in the market. Again, I'll link my last video because America is one month away from announcing their recession or not recession or whatever's happening with that. So look for that coming in about the first week of July or so. The next cryptocurrency is FTX. Now, if there's one crypto other than ETH and Bitcoin, I would actually hold long-term, it'd be FTX. FTX has actually just held up so well, and it's probably the only altcoin I have been able to look at consistently and tell my see it that and say, oh my God, this thing has actually been holding up. You can see there's the high in September and it wasn't able to get there ever again, which is a little bit sad to see it peaking in September while all the other alts were peaking in November. So it was a very early runner, but it didn't manage to get back to, back to its all time high, but it's only about 65% down from its all time high, which is actually not that bad, especially considering this is an altcoin. A lot of altcoins are broken down much, much, much worse than this. And you can see the June and July low, which are these levels here. You can see FTX is still hot, not even near these levels. It still has to go down basically another 20%, give or take, for it to start going to those $22 levels that it was at during that June and July bear market phase that we were in last year. But we're still a healthy way away from it. You can see the volume bars are uh, very, very big going into the 11th or 12th. That was the dump off. And you can see support finding on it again. So you're getting this one incredibly early. Like I said, this is one more of a hodl coin because I think that Sam Beckman Fried is a very, very smart person. And it just ticks off the fundamentals very easily. You don't have to be a fundamentals guy to see that, okay, it's an exchange. It's targeted institutional banking. It's run by Sam Beckman Fried, the richest person in all of crypto. One of the smartest people, he's on camera, he represented crypto to Congress and things like that. There's a lot of boxes ticked with this cryptocurrency on the fundamental side. And they're actually making revenue, they're actually making profit, and they will definitely be around for the years to come. I think so. The only thing that's a little bit annoying is we're waiting for the volume to kick in with this one. But like I said, your risk to reward ratio is looking pretty good because 7% loss for anything between a 10 to 20% high. If you're going to hold all this thing and move up, then by all means, you can actually start getting maybe a 
200% return. The only downside to FTX is you can't stake it unless you're on the FTX exchange itself. So uh, see if that's something you like or not. I wasn't able to see it on Binance or any of the Australian exchanges. So that's one of the things that I don't like about this uh, coin for me, particularly because if this thing does continue to dip and you want to hodl it, at least you can stake it and get something. Uh, at least you're not just completely just holding onto these bags. At least you're getting some interest. That's why I don't like FTX for me personally, but it has held up really good on our chart. And when the next bull run goes, I can really see FTX being a leader because it shows all the signs of being a leader for the next bull run with just how well it's played on a chart so far, so far. And for it to be middle of this year and for it to still not have to test those June and July levels, it has looked fantastic. A lot of coins have had to test their June and July levels and broken beneath it. FTX has not. So fantastic job and bravo to the team at FTX for uh, doing something clearly that smart money is interested. Otherwise, they wouldn't be supporting it the way they are. That's going to do it for this short video. I hope it helped. Uh, again, guys, be careful. Anything can happen at any time. DCAing into Bitcoin and ETH are still my go-to choices for the majority of people because you can put large amounts. And even if you only get 20, 30, 40% return from ETH, if you can put a large amount of capital, you will more than make up for those profits rather than just putting little tiny amounts of a couple hundred or one or two thousand dollars in just these little unknown cryptos that are just going to wipe you out in one bad move. So think about your position sizing. Think about your risk. I might do a video on that in the future, just talking a little bit more about it. And that way, I think mathematically, some people can really understand how to position themselves. If you want that, let me know down below, put a comment down. But until then, everyone stay safe out there and I will catch you on the next video.